Extreme is on the Guitar Hero, right? Yeah. How did that happen? Um, Mark Henderson, he's the guitar player who puts together uh, anything related to guitar with Guitar Hero. Uh, he's a huge fan of Piggy, and uh, that was his tribute uh, to Piggy, was to include a song on uh, Guitar Hero. And um, I think that it was hard for him to convince everybody like me with the 3D glasses, it was hard for him to uh, get into everybody's head that there should be a Voivod song on there mm -hmm. because uh, the band is so obscure, uh, but he succeeded and it got us a lot of attention. Many, many um, kids post on YouTube their performance on Guitar Hero. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, there are tons of extreme performance on the online. Oh, so that's it's great. cool. Yeah, it was quite a plus for us. We split the band many times out of despair and discouragement and there's always somebody who will come back like Jason Newsted and save us saying, no, no, you guys absolutely can't disappear. You're not allowed to. And we're like, yeah, yeah, we want to disappear. <laughs> and, but it's just, we have like uh, saviors there and there that will uh, come and uh, help the band and uh, Dave Grohl does that, and you know, so uh, peop like people who had the chance of, um, you know, um, having a lot of success uh, in their career will come and help us because it, they think it's not fair that uh, we're still so underground. But I don't really worry about the underground nature of the band. It's if if anything, it means less financial security. It's such weird music that we play. I can't really expect it to be mainstream at all. So I'm, I accept the fact 100%. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at ease with it. I'd be in deep trouble if I was not a graphic artist though. Oh. Then I would have to tour all year long to make a living. Mm. And uh, I love to travel. It's quite grueling uh, because um, we are like in our mid 40s, and so we have to keep in shape in order to be able to achieve that. So it's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah well, if you're playing every night, that's a certain amount of workout. Yeah, that's, it is. Yeah. But in order, like, if we have to go on tour and play every night, we have to prepare. I mean, otherwise we're just gonna die of a heart attack eventually on stage. <laughs> so, uh, so all of my life I've worked really, really, really hard <laughs> from the start. Never stop never stop working we're definitely not slackers and sometimes we can be a bit elusive but it doesn't seem that we stop working at all when whenever that happens that we take two or three years off because of a big bad luck or whatever I keep working on reissues and anything I can make available to uh, the people who like Voiva because they're so loyal that uh, we think they deserve material so yeah what's going on with the reissues what happened was two years ago I was working on the, the remaster of War, Killing Tech and Damage and Atras, and every album would come out with the Iron Gang DVD from the, the Iron Gang archives. Halfway through the process, Universal bought Sanctuary. About a month ago, um, got a call from Sanctuary saying, okay, we restructure everything and uh, we're ready to start working on it again. So uh, we're working on it right now. So I'm hoping it's going to come out this year. At least Roar is ready, is all ready to come out. And I was halfway through Killing Tech, Universal Bot Sanctuary. So there's still a lot of work to be done. And uh, Diva 2, their Eric Years Forest, uh, their Eric Forest Years uh, is in production. And uh, Diva 3 with Jason Houston is in production also. Is there a schedule for the reissues of Roar? And not right now. They're not going to release a certain time apart from each other. It's going to be released um, as soon as uh, Sanctuary are really uh, ready to release War. It's going to come out, and this should be this year. Killing Tech is almost done on my part. I have to. Uh, it's a lot of work to put everything on digital format. All the VHS sent to the PO box in the 80s. All the demos. And uh, it's a lot of work. That's the thing. People get frustrated one, uh, sometimes because um, it takes two to three years between Voivod projects, mm. but everything is self-produced and pretty much done at home. So uh, that's why it takes a lot of my time. And uh, uh, 
I wish we would be like you too, or you know, and have a lot of money to uh, pay people to do it, but it's not the case. Right. So we have to learn how to do it. It's always been the case with Voivod. We always had to learn how to do it. When we did War and Pain, Brian Sligo was running the label in the garage of his parents' place. Mm -hmm. We were living at our parents' place, so we had no money to pay somebody to do the art. Right. And uh, I had I did doodles uh, all my life, so and so that's why I said, "Oh, I'm gonna do the painting." So that's it's the art. first painting you ever did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and the uh, middle bit were like, "Okay." I'm sure they were, I mean, I actually learned in the Words Away book how like anxious they were when they got the painting because now we're like sending the art to yousendit.com but back right. then I had to ship the painting, it was crazy. I even brought a painting in the plane to Berlin once and it was not dry. Thank God it was acrylic because it, it, it ended up drying up during uh, the flight but oh. uh, so what? Uh, yeah, so it was my very first paintings, and uh, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> but it was out of necessity.